the soap queen of the Nile whose carry-ons are unforgettable. Everyone remembers that scene with Amanda in Carry On Cleopatra. Uh, and she looked absolutely gorgeous then. Uh, and to my mind, I think she looks absolutely gorgeous now. She worked with the legends of the street and became one herself. She's an absolute pro. And that is wonderful in this day and age. It's the wide-eyed Lancashire lass on Star Lives, the Amanda Berry story. Please welcome your host, Carol Vorderman. <laughs> Tonight, the West End starlet who brought British glamour to the widescreen and northern grit to the street. She's been working for over 50 years, which is hard to believe, I know, but in that time, she's made a lot of friends. I first met Amanda when I was about 18. We were booked to do a show at a nightclub. Our particular clientele adored cute girls, and I must say, we were very cute, man. If we ever go back to Ashton, people will always say, How's your Shirley? Is she all right? I saw her on Coronation Street. So the people back in, in Ashton still remember us. Shirley Ann Broadman, really. She always looks stunning. And I crawl in looking like death. And she's there. And it starts then, the, the joy of working with her. Amanda is very passionate about football. After the drama of the weekend, and when I first see her, the uh, reaction can be either Oh, yes, yes, yes. She is the long-suffering Alma. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Barry. and we're only three months not working in the last 50 years. I think so. I, I th actually thought it might have been longer than that because I feel so tired. <laughs> okay. Very well on it, may I say. But I want to take you back to the early days because yes. we've already heard that you weren't christened Amanda Barry at all. No. You were... Shirley Ann Broadbent. Shirley Ann, a great name. My mother named me after Shirley Temple. Ah. Oh. Did she do all the rags? Yes. And... Yes, oh. yes, I slept in rags for years, darling. <laughs> I mean, not these <laughs> So she named you after Shirley Temple, yeah. and she really wanted you to go on the stage, didn't she, your mum? Yeah, she pushed me, she put me on the stage. I, di I, didn't have any, I didn't have any say in it at all. She just put me on the stage. It was nothing she wouldn't do for me, and I owe her absolutely everything. Absolutely. Well, your mum and dad split up, and then yes. they got divorced when you were 13? Something like that, yes. And then you went down to live in Soho at the age of 13. Yes. <laughs> and you joined the theatre... Theatre Girls Club. Yes. They used to take us in for uh, uh, sort of like 30 bob a week and you could stay there till you got a job. But I was the youngest, so they, they used to let me stay there. And all the prostitutes looked after me. <laughs> they, honestly, they really did. Everybody is... I was completely safe walking around Soho. They all looked after me. They were wonderful. And you did uh, eventually, obviously, find stage work. And at the age of 16, 17, you joined Winston's. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, as a dancer. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we're going to hear from somebody who was there with you at that time, who yes. became one of your best friends. <laughs> Amanda was known as the legs, and I was known as the bosom. Which was, was good, actually, because any man that fancied me, the bosom, didn't fancy her. Any man that fancied her because the legs didn't fancy me. So there was never any rivalry between us. We were like the two soubrettes. And we used to come out and sing, What's on in London? What's doing tonight? What's new in this great big city when the lights are bright? We just did sketches and we sang, we danced. She was always a hell of a dancer, you know. I was kind of the one who came out and go, ha, ah, you made me love you a bit like that, you know. But she danced like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> but Barbie was a star, right? I used to sit, I could have said, look up to her. She's smaller than me, isn't she? But I did. I mean, she, she, was, she had complete star quality right from there. 
But you love the West End, don't you? Still yeah. live in the West End yes. now. Yes. Yeah. What do you like about it particularly? Uh, well, the, f the reason I wanted to live there, well, I didn't know where I wanted to live. It, and I always say I ran away from home. I didn't. My home sort of ran away from me. I sort of came back and everybody had gone in different directions. Um, and it was, it was a theatre, so I was just in love with the theatre. I just wanted to be part of it. It was sort of, um, I sort of adopted it as my sort of family. Well, you moved on from the West End to the movies, the Carry On movies, in fact. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're just going to see a few clips of you, starting with Carry On Cleo. Like, oh no, what was it? Oh yes, um, a cup of char and a wad. Look, if you are going to get cross with me, I just get out of my bath and slip into something a little more comfortable, if you don't mind. James, of course, I could hear you going, ah, oh, when you saw him. Uh, oh, on there. I and loved he's a him great friend of yours. Yes, he was. But uh, he was a great friend of mine because I put all his bets on. On the horses? Mm. Because he didn't have betting shops in those days. So it was my job to put the bets on uh, for Charles Hawtrey and for him. And so every scene was cut and to the phone and check if the favourites had come up or check if his each way Yankee had come up or do any of that. And then back. And I did that all the time. I was sort of bookies runner. Because that's one of your passions, isn't it, horse racing? Yes. Mm. Well, it was horses, you see, originally. Yeah. Uh, I just fell in love with horses, like a lot of people do, yeah. you know. Well, I know somebody who will have heard about it is with us, John McCreary. <gasps> He's got a little uh, surprise for you. Well, Amanda, <gasps> certainly have. On um, Channel 4 Racing, we've got a programme on Saturday called The Morning Live. <laughs> and the star of the programme is the greatest jockey who ever rode, the seven times national lunch champion, John Frankham. I know. He absolutely worships you. Now, I, I want you to do something for us. Will you be, in the next few weeks, our guest on The Morning Line, and we would pray <laughs> if you would give us your tips that day. <laughs> I would, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed, I can't... I just, can I say something? Yeah. It's the only time, you know people watch Coronation Street and they go, don't ring me during Coronation Street. The only time nobody can ring me is Channel 4 race, it's Saturday morning. If anybody rings, it is switched off because of all the tips on morning. Oh, you're wonderful. Wonderful, so but you will, will come going? on. You so promise will you me? will going, Amanda? Oh, yeah. He, she'll be going. Yeah. She'll we'll be. See you I can't get my Thank tips you, because I get them from you. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> An awful lot of dance partners, Amanda, haven't you, over the years? But we're going to see something now that hasn't been seen in Britain before because it's you and two gorgeous reprobates from the street performing for the International Emmy Awards. Watch this. <laughs> I don't know, these musical people, I think you get up in the morning to a beat and the whole day carries on. Do you remember, I couldn't come in on the beat, I had to have a cue. It was like his an first time he'd ever does and he learned straight away. <laughs> oh. Now, Ken and Alma, of course, they've had their little romantic flurries, haven't they? Yeah, we yeah, never we really sort of got it together properly, No, but it was, a, it was his fault because he, he yeah. got ill and you got ill in the middle of a storyline. I know, and who knows, we might have we been might have together. We might have finished that together. You've never yeah. actually consummated the... Oh, I think no, we, I don't... <laughs> No, I think, I, think, um, I think we've had more success off screen yeah. if, uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with exactly. that down and, and tennis partners at the yeah. Cliff Richards. Um, oh, are you sporty then? I didn't yes, realise you were a tennis yeah. player. Oh, very. Oh, 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 no, no, she's brilliant at tennis. He writes? In fact, there's nothing <laughs> Amanda can't do. <laughs> No, Amanda's absolutely lovely, aren't you? You really, she's gorgeous. Oh, my. Gorgeous. No. You are. You are. Well, am I allowed to say how old you are, Amanda? Oh, yes, 
just because I never hid it before. No. No, it's the precedent. I was lying about my age. I've never lied about my and age. How old are you? Uh, I'm uh, by the body of the... 65. No. 65. No. Have a it. It's fantastic. Bloody much, darling, when you get a round of applause over your age. <laughs> but you can do the carry ons now. I think not many, not many left, are there? No, but, uh, no. I think so. No, I'm getting yeah. it on the morning line. I don't care about work now. <laughs> <laughs> but will you miss her, William? I uh, will miss Amanda tremendously. She's a great warmth, she's a lovely person. Um, and I judge people by their kindness factor. And with Amanda, I give a 10 out of 10 on kindness. She oh, really oh. is. No, she's a love. She's wonderful. And we will miss her. A lot of warmth is there with Amanda. Oh, well. thank, you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Kevin. William Roach, thank you. And thank you for giving that. Join us in part two for more of the Amanda Barry story, more street stars and more of the roles of one of our true leading ladies. She's done it all. What about this for a performance? Oh, a letter. Me, a letter. Oh, look, it's got a stamp on and my name and address and everything. Look, that's my name, Amanda, and that's where I live, Hickory House. Oh, I wonder what it says. <laughs> When you say Amanda, it sums up a girl who has so much talent, is a joy to be with, and I am going to miss her. The programme will miss her. Welcome back to Star Lives. Tonight, the story of Amanda Barry. I'm a little... Yeah, I think the people will miss her on the street because she's full of fun. Very good mimic. So, uh... Yes, I'll miss her as well. I, I wish her all the luck in the world. She's a star. That's what she is. In every walk of life, she's a star. There's no doubt about it. She's a lovely, lovely person. She makes what could be a quite hard day uh, fun to do. I think she's great. This was the music of, of Gertrude Lawrence, and I just want to take you back now to uh, the times with your mum, because you've spoken of your mum already, and uh, your brother Chris is here, because your mum used to take you and, and your sister Caroline to the theatre all the time to see Amanda, didn't Yeah, she? we followed around yeah. everywhere. And did Amanda always know that you were in? Always. How? End of the show, my mother was in the handbag searching for the matches. And as soon as she came on, she was here, like this. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if one wasn't enough, there'd be two or three, <laughs> and say, we're here, we're <laughs> here. <laughs> and she used to get up to tricks, Caroline, didn't she, in the interval as well? Oh, she did. I mean, before Mandy became famous, uh, famous at the interval, well. she'd always be uh, kind of listening to, to how the play was going. And uh, she'd, in a very loud voice, kind of say, oh, who's that girl? H who's that marvellous girl with the, the, the big eyes? <laughs> She's so beautiful. I mean, she, she's going to be a star. I mean, she, she, she's the star of the show. She's terribly proud of her, isn't she? Oh, yes, absolutely. But I could do no wrong, really, could I? It's awful for everybody. Look at them shaking their heads going... You could, you could. yes. Now, everything went swimmingly for you. Your eyes have been your trademark. You fantastically huge, gorgeous brown eyes. Exactly. But six yeah. years ago, they let you down, didn't they? Oh, well, yes, they went, <laughs> they went a bit astray, dear. What I, happened? I, I, oh, I didn't talk about it. I had a retinal vein occlusion, and it, it sort of wiped out. I've got a sort of now. I've been very lucky, actually, because I can see that everything's crooked. Everything uh, looks a bit geochromatic, actually. I'm so lucky because I can see enough. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, well, I can. I can see you if I close this eye, <laughs> you know, sort of that shape. But if I open this That's eye, I can still accurate. see you. <laughs> no, it's like, I say I'm all right. A lot of people can't see at all. And I shall, I hope, I just hope they can stay the way they are. That's all. Mm -hmm. They will. I've told them to. <laughs> well, I want to talk about the street now because by your own choice, you, you're just finishing in the street. But yeah. you started all the way back in 19... 81. Oh, and we're going to see you here face to face with the great, the mighty Elsie Tanner, and then later 
with a manic Don Brennan. So you're Elsie Tanner. Yeah, Jim's told me about you. Oh, so I'm wasting my time then, am I? No, of course not. He, uh, he spoke very highly of you. Did he? Oh, till he had that bit of bother with you. Whoo, the air was blue then, I don't mind telling you. <laughs> he, uh, he never did say exactly what the uh, bother was. No, he wouldn't, because he was never told. I've got to go home. Why? I've got to, I've got to. He's not that. You want to tell him, don't you? You can't wait to give him the lowdown. You must think I'm stupid. Get out of my eye like the rest of them. Please, please. They'll ring police. They'll I've tell told them. you I won't. You're a liar. You're going to kill us. You liar. We off taxes for weeks that day. <laughs> <laughs> we did, really did. Well, you joined in 1981, but yes. you only had a contract for two weeks, but your mum did try, oh. didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> to get you a longer contract, is that right? Yes. She did. She did. <laughs> oh, she, she started to ring through, unbeknownst to me, to the production office, straight through to Bill Podmore. Who was the producer. Who was the producer there, doing all these accents. And she'd, be, she'd ring up and she'd say, I think, I think the part of Alma Sedgwick is the most wonderful part of ever <laughs> And wouldn't it be wonderful if she stayed in? You can't do without program. She went through every accent in the book. And then eventually the, the production office rang up and Bill Podmore said, will you ask your mother to stop ringing? <laughs> <laughs> I nearly killed her. That's, that's the sort of thing she did. <laughs> But you did go back into the street in 1989. It was yeah, the they wanted me back so much they waited eight years. <laughs> <laughs> I'd obviously get it. over the first night. But it's time now to meet two of your greatest pals, both on and off screen, of course. They are Audrey Sue Nichols oh. and Gail Hallowell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you see, you see, they look like an Amami shampoo, yes. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, the gang, the gang. Hello. I can Ooh. see you're all girlies yes. together. Yeah, it's we are. going to gossip too now, then. Oh, it's going to be I should awful. be on the phone. No, I'm missing you already. <laughs> I'm going to miss her terribly. Yes. I, I, she's a, a lovely... I, th I think this doesn't sound too camp. A kind of soul <laughs> sister. Although I don't... These two dashed to London at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, sorry. 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 Uh, I'm too lazy and too old. But oh, give it they, to work with her is a delight. And I don't know why, because we... Don't know why? To, no. <laughs> we just kind of gel. But yeah. we don't kind of work at gelling, like you have to with some fellow actors. I'm told we gel, and that's lovely. And the one blessing, the only real reason I love working with her is because of the aforementioned lovely eyes. And I have absolutely just about oh, fine my... So oh. early in the morning when oh, I'm working with this one because they're so wonderful and it makes me go, oh, hello, Alma. <laughs> so oh, those scenes, I look quite kind of nice. Um, so, but there are many other reasons and um, I'm sad and we've been doing some rather tough work lately, but I hope and it'll be okay. And she's making you a wonderful job. Uh, Thank you very she's much. Look, and she does Thank that a lot too. <laughs> Shaking my I didn't mean to do that. No. Because you do, you both live in London, don't you? Both Helen and Amanda. Yes. 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 And in and fact, you know, I mean, she's not leaving really because we're going to see lots of, in London. We've got lots yeah. of plans. I mean, we have <laughs> lots of things in common. We, uh, we, we eat, we eat, we eat, we eat a, lot. a lot. And occasionally, we do up houses and yeah. uh, we go to the theatre. We go to the theatre, meet there. We, and yeah. <laughs> we cried so much when we were taken out of the cafe. Oh, when we were taken out of the We actually couldn't do the scene. You were so upset. Yeah, because we're too much. Do you think this split us up? Well, well Amanda, it's obvious that you do love all of this because your home really is what the dressing room. I mean, would you say that that's your home? My home is the dressing room. I have to say, because yes, I don't know where they're going to give me another job where I get paid for waiting and going to sleep in between scenes in the dressing room and just hanging on long enough in the dressing room if it's 
Cheltenham or something, just if they've called you to say, I oh, won't be a minute, I've lost three shoes somewhere, I'll just look for them. <laughs> Trying to get to the end of the race, I got much racing. Yeah. <laughs> Are you worried though about leaving and knowing no, what you're no. going to do? Are you going to keep busy? Or? Uh, if I can't earn my living in the theatre, I'm going down to the betting shop. <laughs> 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 I am, I've done it before in the past. I even chalked, but I'm dyslexic, so it really screwed everybody up. <laughs> I think if Amanda wants to work, she's going to be offered so much and will mm. work. And I think she has so much enthusiasm, so much talent, and she makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't wait for those first night parties. I can't wait. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Sue Nichols and Helen Wood. <laughs> Well, I've got one final treat for you Something. because we're going to end going right back to the very beginning. The little girl who was sent to dance lessons. And uh, we found a postcard which you wrote to your very first dance teacher, Miss Alicia Cottrell. And this says, you wrote this, Dear Miss Cottrell, I love it here and the dancing is really very good. I hope to be able to see you sometime during the holidays uh, once again. Thank you for everything. Much love, Shirley Broadbent. But you never posted no, this postcard. No, that would be me. No, well, no. sadly, um, she hasn't been able to leave home in Lytham St. Anne's for 10 years because of an illness. She's 93 now, and she sends this message. I'd like to say how very proud I am that the little girl called Shirley turned out to be Alma in Coronation Street. A bright little girl with dark curly hair, a pleasure to teach. And I'm very proud to realise that one of my little pupils became a star. And I send her my love. And so do we. Amanda <laughs> Barry, thank you for being a star in our lives. <laughs>